In this episode, we tour an exotic plant cafe in Taiwan that is adorned with challenging to grow tropical and subtropical plants. This episode is broken down into three parts, outdoors, indoors, and the paludarium. Feel free to jump to the appropriate timestamps if some parts feel irrelevant to you. Alvin is our knowledgeable guide for today's tour, as well as the rest of our Taiwan series. His background, experience, and passion in botany and horticulture is unparalleled. Alvin has kindly provided names, their origins, and some valuable care tips. We discovered tons of plants that even I have never seen before. We will learn about advanced plant care tips in a challenging, low-humidity, indoor environment, including the infamous maidenhair fern. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. And this is... Elvin. I'm El Elvin. Actually, I come from Hong Kong, but I live in Taiwan for many years. And we yeah. are in? We're in Taoyuan right now. Taoyuan. Taoyuan is a satellite city, according to Elvin. So we are not really in Taipei. We are in the outskirts of Taipei. But we're outside of a convenient Vitaria Cafe, which Elvin helped style with plants about yeah. two, three years ago. Three years ago. We're going to introduce some plants here, such as the ones behind us. It's a green wall with a lot of plants that can withstand a subtropical climate. So in this region, the coldest temperature is about 10 degrees Celsius. So it's not really yeah. that cold, but some of these plants do thrive in this condition. So we're going to learn about plant care outdoors as well as discover some of the species here. And in the next few episodes, we're going to also discover a little bit more about Alvin because he is a plant stylist enthusiast, <laughs> an author, uh, he, uh, what else? It sounds awkward. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's fine. Enthusiast. Enthusiast. Yeah. Enthusiast. <laughs> Enthusiast. <laughs> Enthusiast. But he's actually done a lot in the plant community, so feel free to follow him on Instagram. But I'm going to ask him a lot of questions about his experience with plants and, and styling projects, landscaping, and he knows a lot about the plant trade in Taiwan here as well. So stay tuned for the next few episodes. We're going to discover a lot about house plants in Taiwan. This wall here, first of all, how do you even water this? Is a sprinkler system or no? There's a there's a draining system right inside the wall, so it's fine. But it's also um, I can just say, uh, a misting. Yeah, misting. There's a misting. Wait, how does there's it work? There's a misting so you, system right here. You so you said inside there's a watering system. How does it work? Like there's a there's oh, a spring here. Okay. Yeah. So that delivers water to each of these pots. Yeah, uh, I I remember uh, every. Every 10 minutes, it will spray. Yeah, every, okay. ten, every 10 minutes. And also, there is a uh, dripping, the, there's uh, pipes right there, and the water will drip, drip, drip. That is facing north, and that is east, so everybody knows, and this is the condition, so it's getting morning direct sunlight. Yes. And then, and for here, uh, I will put some more plants, it will, uh, it, they will get used to the darker, um, with less sunlight plants right here uh, okay. because in the summer the tree we got a big canopy so the plants right here can get used to the low sunlight okay so it's getting actually pretty low light yeah to you yeah but it got some pruning mm -hmm. recently so <laughs> most of the plants you will see that it got sunburn right here <laughs> okay yeah so normally it's a bit more full than this because it's yes. a bit, a bit of pruning. After pruning. Right, so the top here, this is the Platycerium wandai. Wandai, yeah. Yeah, and there's a huge uh, clump of Platycerium up there. Uh, just Bifocatum. <laughs> yeah. It's just Bifocatum. Uh, actually, it is, uh, this is from a collection of the, own, of the owner. Cafe owner yeah. yeah. So he likes bromeliads and Platycerium. Uh, also Nepenthes. Nepenthes. Yeah. All right. And you're a begonia enthusiast, so you, begonias oh. are you're doing here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a, a, known, a known species of from the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Chloronura, begonia Chloronura. Okay. Actually, there are some natural hybrid between that unknown, unknown species of begonia and coronera. Yeah, these are actually hybrid. And they can take the weather of tai Taiwan just yes. fine. Uh, actually, they, both of these species are come from Philippines and so uh, because there is this highland from Philippines, they can get used, oh, get used to the condition in here. This one this is Simania sil silvanica. It is from South America. It's cute. Uh, this is the kind of just areas and they will they, they will get flowering in winter and they will become very ugly <laughs> in the summer uh, this is begonia acetosa 
Okay. It's a toast and it was very sour. Very sour? Yeah, very sour. Well, because someone tried to eat it. Yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe I didn't try it, but the, 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 the scientific name is sour. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And this is Nenambifolia, also from, it's from Brazil, right? Okay. <laughs> Which means the lotus leaf. Huge, my yeah. gosh, this is beautiful. Yeah. So it is a Huchera. Huchera. Huchera? Yeah, Huchera. Coral bells, that's yeah. the common name. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful, it is, actually. It is a plant from, uh, from temperate zone. It is not a tropical plant. And actually, I really like this begonia. This is begonia solimutata. Solimutata is from Brazil. It, 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 it's a very hardy plant in Taiwan. Yeah. Um, what is the humidity like outdoors? On it's, it. it's not really high if when the wind is very like like this, strong. very but strong. Is it at least fifty percent? Fifty to forty, because uh, the north the the northern Taiwan is quite wet yeah. in the winter. So begonia is actually quite okay with this kind of humidity because we always thought that they are like. Uh, oh, uh, just because dirty. this kind of begonia is from Brazil, the climate in Brazil, southern Brazil, is similar to Taiwan. Surprisingly, this can live here, a fern. And they couldn't be beautiful in summer. <laughs> this is too hot again. Yeah. So you think so, uh, summer is in fact their worst enemy? Yes, but the, nice. but, the, but the winter is too cold this year, so they they couldn't get good in the winter. So yeah. they do best in spring and in fall, maybe. What is oh, this, this is begonia chloronilla uh, from Philippines, the Philippines. Beautiful. Species, right? Yeah, uh, used to be a very rare species, but recently <laughs> it is quite, no, quite, quite common in in the on market. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is uh, another hybrid. Uh, it called a begonia hetero beatrix. These are bitches. Beatrix. 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 Yeah, I've got some of these more common begonia, but. Uh, I've, I'm seeing this a lot in Indonesia lately. I'm not sure what the name is. I think it's a cultivar. Uh, Alright, so this is a large Deliciosa. Hi. <laughs> and look at that, it's rooted into the wall. And also it's starting to fruit. Is this flower or fruit? Fruit. So what does it do? It flowers first and then it fruits fruit or it just... Caustic gets flower first. So the flower is gone. Yep. And now the fruits are appearing after. Yep. And here you were just saying that this begonia is? Uh, is it another coronura uh, is just a seedling. Yeah. Naturalized right here. <laughs> so the seed somehow flew here. Uh, and because, then... because in the wild, this kind of begonia is, is just grow on the rocks. Yeah. Uh, very moist rocks. Yeah. And it's just like, maybe it is, it, it is similar to its wild conditions. Okay. Tough, tough begonias. They really want to live. This is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, also from uh, Saxophagia stolonifera down here. Let's zoom out to show you the, the side of the cafe. So, this is the wall that we're looking at. And that's the cafe entrance. So, for those of you guys who want to have a botanical adventure here uh, near Taipei, we're in Taoyuan, another city nearby. Is that a painted lady? A painted lady. It is, right? Ir Iribescence, Iribescence painted lady. Cute! And it's like growing on the, on the glass. And it lost the irrigated. <laughs> no, it came back, I think, in the top oh, leaf. Maybe, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it lost it in the middle. But... Because as I remember the first, very first... Yeah. Because when the very first time I saw it, this is full of the irrigation. This temperature is okay for philodendrons. Outdoors. This is fine for it. It's very fine for it. Oh, it's okay. irrescence is a very hardy plant. Oh. All right. So in this section here, we've got a lot of interesting plants happening. The, most of the action is happening up above, though. Actually, I like I like the virvira most. The, the uh, virvira. Ah, uh, rhododendron. Which one is that? The orange flower. Yeah. A virvira is is. Only especially for the rainforest for the dendron okay. describing. You said rainforest. It's from New Guinea. You have a lot of jungle cacti up here as well, trailing down. So these are all basically trailing plants that you put up there. You know the the, the cafe is called Viteria Cafe. Yeah. It got Viteria right here. Viteria is desperate. Oh the, that, the that one. Yeah, this is Viteria. That's a Viteria fern. Yeah. 
secretariat. Interesting. I actually don't know how that <laughs> It is a secretariat. <laughs> but it is not easy going. Interesting. And this is Dishkiri. I'm surprised too, to see them down here. Dishkiri Ruspifolia. Some bromeliads up there. A, a lot of succulents. <laughs> yeah. So there's a drip and a sprinkler system yep. up above yep. that waters the plants almost every day. Okay. Yes. Yes. And that's zero every graphic. Uh, every half an hour. Every half an hour. Is that too much water for them though? It is very windy. Okay. It is very windy. So it gets dry very quickly. Yep. Look at this ball of footed fern. This is crazy. So just a reminder that all these plants here, they have it can withstand slightly cooler temperature, although some of them are from like tropical climates, but they have learned to adapt. Adapt? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but some couldn't, actually, some couldn't. I so some, some like, didn't make it, right? Uh, like this is a Jachova <laughs> Multifida, it couldn't. Yeah, it <laughs> didn't couldn't make it. it. Okay. And then this is a Ripsalis, beautiful, it's doing well. I really like it. I really like it. And this is Asian Hoya. Oh, Hoya. Hoya. This Hoya. What? This is Hoya Sunrise or? Hoya Obscura something? I forgot it. Okay. Oh, I think there is. Rodilia. Colanchoe, Dendrobium. Yeah. Oh, okay, the Philodendron uh, Stenolobum. Uh, okay. uh, this is another genus now. <laughs> Not yeah, Philodendron. Uh, yeah, Philodendron. Uh, this is Catalea, uh, well, Renanthera. Alcantaria or what is that? Uh, Alcantaria imperialis. Okay. Alcantaria. With a blanket of Tillandsia. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, <laughs> it fell from, 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 from there. From up there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this is on I, purpose. Be, why do I know it? Because just the owner just told me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he don't have time to manage it. Pick it up, yeah. Microphone died on me. From here onwards, any part of my speech will be done in a voiceover. So we have moved indoors in the cafe, and Alvin styled this space around three years ago. Uh, but but this for here, and uh, actually most of the plant is bought from the owner of the cafe. Uh, actually it changed a lot <laughs> already. So the owner is very passionate and enthusiastic about houseplants and keeping them around. Him and his team of workers have dedicated a lot of time into plant care. They have even set up an environment that allows them to thrive, such as the LED lights that we see all around the shop. It is actually very, very bright in here when we're filming. These are full spectrum light bulbs meant for plants. The plasterum grows well too. Okay. Like this is Spadacerum and Dinum. It is worth mentioning that the interior is kept at room temperature and the humidity here hovers at around 50%. There's a large Anthurium varroquianum here. They do like a little bit more humidity, but look at those Apischias hanging back there. These are some large specimens. Uh, yeah, it's five years old already. The, the only small pot right there. <laughs> yeah, so the main pot is up way up there. And there's nothing inside here. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing. Like so this is the most lush apiscia I've seen in my life. So inside there, it really is hollow and empty. These are all just leaves. And Elvin is going to share with us the adiantum or maidenhair fern care. Now, keep in mind, this is 50% humidity in here. It's not high humidity by any means. Tips? No, I, my tips is you, you couldn't you couldn't let the leaves get wet. Yeah. You, 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 they don't like there's a lot of water drops on the leaves. They, they like the alkaline environment. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't use the something is very and a very porous potting media that is not allowed full to dry of, out. It's full of rocks. Something. Yeah. Will you look at this massive specimen of maiden hair fern right outside the bathroom? Very Crazy big. that it's like doing so well here. So it's been living permanently in here, and then there's a lot of rock pumice uh, here under air condition. Is yeah under air condition, and this is kept lightly moist. You said. Kit lightly moist a lot. It, it doesn't need, it don't like the very moist condition. But yeah. not too wet. Not too wet and not too dry. Yeah. It's good for that. I must admit the pH value of the spotting media has never been a concern for me before, but now I should start paying attention to it. It is totally possible here for maiden hair ferns to thrive in indoor spaces with low humidity, as you can see here. Look at that happy Boston fern all the way up by the ceiling. So the boss here explained that he had staffs climb up a ladder and water these every three to four days. How insane is that? Uh, those hanging plants, yeah. Disip uh, Anthurium disappears. Disappears. Disappears, yeah. It's still very small. <laughs> it, it's a very, it's a giant plant like this. 
There's a cool plant shelf back there with some merchandise that's on sale and all these plants that are effortlessly perched on the shelves. And we pan slowly towards the storefront. This is what passerby see when they walk by the store. They just, they just call it fei niu. Fei niu, it looks like a, like a fatty beef. Uh, fatty beef. beef. Niu. He 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 niu. It looks like a beef, like yeah. a raw steak. I, I don't know the color for yeah, It looks like a raw steak. Yeah. It's also kind of Adiantum or not? Yeah, Adiantum, yeah, made in here, yeah. But this is very wispy, very cute. A very small codifer. I forgot its codifer name. Begonia igniter, uh, 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 a new species from Sulawesi. Sulawesi is a northern island of Indonesia. Nice to meet you here in Taiwan. Alistoma, <laughs> Alistoma, <laughs> not Ravens, it's not Ravens. Uh, 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 I forgot its name. Ah. Uh, It'll be on the screen. <laughs> Alocasia Black Velvet. I think a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with that one. And then here is a very uncommon Apischia Cleopatra. It's got pink variegation, very slow growing, and it was popular about a year ago. And some beautiful Peperomia caparata variegated variety. But this one is the Primalena Liu Zhangensis. It's from Guangxi. Guangxi? Yeah, it's, it's from a plant from Guangxi. But this is a Gisneria, right? Yep, I like it. <laughs> you will see some plants I like right it's here. It's really beautiful. Wow. At least in under good condition. <laughs> so it's not easy to grow? Mm, if the condition is not very well, like uh, it will just go not that pretty. Guess yeah. what it is? It? Oh, it's, it's almost flora? growing. No, Rhododendron. No. Uh, Faria. 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 V-I-R-U-Y-A. The tropical rhododendron. This is a, a, fici a platycerium fichii. The owner of the cafe is a passionate collector of the platycerium, and a lot of Taiwanese and Japanese people also adore this genus. In case you didn't know, Taiwan is the first country in Asia to legalize same sex marriage. Another fichii. Yeah. <laughs> Another fichii. I guess this one is doing okay in about 50% humidity, so it's this Anthurium waraquianum. So I guess it is possible to grow these in a lower humidity environment. Like this kind of begonias, they, they, doesn't, they don't need a very high humidity right here. Maybe a little dry is better, for, better to them, yeah. Like this is a, a species from, from Vietnam, Northern Vietnam, it is called Lockii, L-O-C-I-I. -I. Mm. Oh. My hybrid. <laughs> what do you mean your hybrid? Uh, oh, I made, I, made, I made this hybrid. <laughs> what? So you do hybridize? You know, if you got a lot of begonias, you will try to do it. <laughs> okay. But I really like this hybrid because uh, it, it's just a very hardy plant. Just, you may just put it outside, outdoor is fine. So you, what I mean, did you give it a name? Sorry, pardon? Did you name it? Or? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Elvin CI. Uh, Elvin, Elvin Switch French. <laughs> <laughs> I what? Revenge. Sweet revenge? Yep. <laughs> is, I, it, is it the same one that we saw earlier? Yeah, Liu Zhang Ensis. Yeah. It's called Yu. Liu Zhang, Liu Zhang Ensis. Oh, that's interesting. Liu Zhang, Liu Zhang is it's a, a city name. It, uh, It's a city from Guangxi. Yeah. In the central Guangxi. Is this difficult to care for? No, uh, not in Taiwan, but if you if you come from Indonesia, no. <laughs> This is like Saracenia, very cute. Saracenia? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Saracenia. It is a picture plant. Pitch, yeah, picture but... Plant. Oh, oh, Saracenia. Yeah, uh, Saracenia. No, 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 it is Helio... Helio... what? Helio... Something. Helio something. Oh, this is cute. It's really cool that people can just buy these plants and bring them home. That's well. Oh, because well. he like... the owners like... Carnivorous. Yeah, carnivorous. And platyceriums. Yep, and, and bromeliads. <laughs> so you will see a lot of tulans here. <laughs> Next up is a Dioscoria discolor. It's got a tuber and it grows like a vine. Fast growing, easy to propagate. But these guys, they do go dormant and come back when conditions are favorable. And this is actually very gorgeous. One of my favorite plants of all times. I chose it. <laughs> I chose it. Oh, <laughs> This is a Stromanthi Triostar, definitely a challenge, especially to grow it indoors. They crisp up when you over or underwater it and they love a lot of bright light. And this wash area here is totally adorable. Look at all these plants that are on the table. And there's a mirror here so you could double the space with the mirror. And there's a cute Raphidophora Tetrasperma. They're actually very fast growing. They will fill up a space very quickly. This is really cute too. This is like a crazy plant person's area. Alex from here. Uh, begonia, right? Elephant, yeah. Uh, this is a species from Taiwan. 
Mm. It's called Luk Lukwana. Lukwana. Uh, Luk Luku is a is a place in the middle of Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. You said this one is the. I uh, remember it's called Elephant Ear. Elephant Ear. Elephant Ear Begonia. Yeah. 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 This area is really really cute. Aiden Sonia. Yeah. Another Begonia U five seven seven. Okay. It's crazy that you remember all the Begonia names. After touring the ground level, we start making our way to the basement, and this is where the magic happens. This is one of the empty rooms downstairs and it's got this plain white wall and this three center pieces of apishkia, totally beautiful. They look like pretty uncommon apishkias and they're given these spotlights that are full spectrum grow lights meant for plants. The apishkia is actually from the Gisneriaceae family and the apishkia that you see here are all from South America and Elvin specializes in the Gisneriaceae that are from Asia. Actually, the Chinese name is Xiying Hua. Xiying means uh, it lights the duck. Oh, like low light? Low light, yeah. And over here, there's a shelf full of baby plants that are up for sale. They look so adorable. Look at these baby platyceriums and tillandsias. We, we thought this begonia uh, was a new species from Vietnam, but find out it's a Chinese, Chinese, Chinese species because the flower is really uh, really similar or even identical to another species from China, which is called uh, uh, Finimensis, Finimentosa, something. Yeah. Uh, Peperomia as well. Peperomia. A string of turtles. This is a ficus. Ficus. This yeah. is ficus. But they call it string of turtles. But yeah, it's oh, a string ficus. Of, oh, yeah. But it looks string like a turtle, turtles. right? Okay, it's string of turtles. I actually bought this from a friend. Uh, he need to sell it. Uh, he need to sell this very <laughs> precious plant. It is a cycus uh, multi multipinata. Mm -hmm. The cycus multipinata is from uh, Guangxi of China. This is uh, actually a limestone area plant. And for this kind of cycus, they don't like a uh, really big sun uh, sunlight. It's very fuzzy. Yeah, very fuzzy. Fuzzy and thorns. We we might <laughs> don't touch the. Oh, sure. Yeah, because it's very, very spiky, very oh, spiky, spiny. very spiny. Yeah, and this goes around. It's got a nice, interesting turquoise color on the stem, and it goes around and it bends, and it comes around like that. This is beautiful, actually. Oh, this is not a normal, <laughs> normal situation because the sunlight here for him is, for it, it is not enough. <laughs> not the ideal condition. Not ideal. Yeah. Yeah, and this is where they grow up from. They come up from this. This part here. Small plot. Uh, not really small actually. <laughs> okay. It would go better if you just put it on ground. There's a cool plant interior scape happening here with aglonemas, alocasias, apischias, and begonias and calatheas. Look at these impressive apischias next to these staghorn ferns. They look almost like a sculpture in a way because they form such an odd looking clump. Can you imagine plant care here? It must be really difficult, especially with all these large hanging basket plants that they have to water every three to four days. I really applaud their efforts. Uh, impatience, impatience niam niamensis is actually from, from Congo, the Africa. And that's the, also the Adiantum, that is the one. Yep, Adiantum. It seems to be alive. I don't know, maybe he just buys and replaces them all the time, or he's good at growing them. Yeah, but it is not, it is quite cheap in Taiwan. <laughs> Actually, it's not an expensive plant. <laughs> but if you need to grow it like this really well, it's not as easy. Papophyllum phalaenopsis from New Guinea. I think it is quite, it is quite decent species. Uh, for those orchid collectors. And it's doing okay here. This is a bit of a low light situation. It's fine. It's fine, it's for, fine low, right? for, for low light situation. Yeah. yeah. But it, uh, I see some nurseries in Taiwan, they just put this species under very low light. And it doesn't need a very, <laughs> very high sunlight. It's another anthurium. Uh, this, is, uh, this is from Palama. Palama, right? Uh, Palama. Uh, this is called anthurium uh, papariospathum. I forgot this cultivar name. Yeah, I, this one. And another cultivar, Rex. Yeah. This is the uh, anthurium, no? Uh, anthurium uh, clidemioides. Mm -hmm. Anthurium clidemioides. 
from Peru. Oh, this is one of my beloved begonia. Is it is uh, begonia arachnoides. It's from Guangxi too. Oh, my gosh. oh, this is from Brazil. This is called Bulatifolia. Bulatifolia. Yeah, bullet, bullet leaf. Oh, yeah. Bullet leaf. A lot of ignita. Finally, we visit the paludarium that is kept cool, humid, and very bright. Most of the plants that live here are epiphytic, including this beautiful nepenthes. The owner is actually an enthusiastic collector of the nepenthes and carnivorous plants. Really likes nepenthes. That is a uh, this uh, nepenthes novi novi I cross with uh, the the smallest nepenthes, uh, the Campanulata is a hybrid. Ah, oh, this is and uh, this is a uh, begonia which is found by the famous landscaper uh, who called uh, Patrick Blanc. This is begonia blanchia. Mm. Uh, Anatostema? Uh, unknown. I know. We just we just know it uh, is from Thailand. Uh, is it a piper? Piper, piper palm, uh, palmata. Mm. Piper palmata. Interesting. It looks like an alocasia, doesn't it? If you look at it. Just like some some kind of anthurium. Yeah. yeah. This is a, Cute. Actually, a piper. I think it's very common in your country. Yeah. What is this one? Is it an orchid? No, no, no. This is a uh, Jacksina, Jacksina goldii. Okay. Goldii. Mm. Ah, this. This is a very delicate species from Madagascar. Uh, it's, it's, it's called um, Begonia laeolii subspecies Masoana. <laughs> wow, okay. yeah. your Begonia memory is like... You know, it's fine. But this one. Yeah, this is actually know. interesting. Did you say it before? Uh, this is, this is Phalagetus and Urinii. And they call it a different name, they call it Fairy. Because it's... Uh, a little bit hanging. Actually, there's two kind of flowers. Oh, I see little tiny flowers. Now. Yeah, and uh, the flower is on on the upper side is a male flower, and the flower in the downside is female flower. Oh wow! I wonder yeah. why that is. Yeah, I see some. This is on the downside, the flower, and it's kind of green. Yeah. On the yeah. downside, why is that? I wonder. Huh? Just female and male flowers. Uh, this begonia bakery. Bakery? Bakery, I. B U R K Y I I. Yeah, this is from Nep Nepal. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful and like, if you look behind it, it's flowering. Look at that. Oh. I mean, beautiful Salaginella here, too. Ah, Salaginella Tecta. Begonia Cross Tecta. What are these? They're grown everywhere. This is, this is impatience. Oh. Impatience, yeah. like Makoana. I forgot the species name. Yeah, but it's really pretty. Pink flowers and variegated. <laughs> it is one of the, the anthurium just grow in the paludarium. It is called anthurium waterbrianum. Mm -hmm. It's got a really interesting texture to it, actually. Quite waxy. Yeah. Uh, but it, is, it grows too too lush inside. I have yeah. no clue that it is a very lush interior. Ugh, it might be also stretching to light. Do you think that's why the patio? Yes, it's stretching to light. Yeah. And after it, the leaf just cover all of the light from the <laughs> from the below. yeah from the bottom. What a jerk! Yeah. <laughs> so they just uh but this is what happens in nature like you're always like trying to then fight for light i guess this concludes our tour thank you so much elvin for this we'll see many more of him in the next upcoming episodes including platyceriums cardiciforms and large extensive collections of begonias feel free to reach out to elvin on instagram if you want to follow his work and i guess i will see you guys in the next one bye bye Thank you Patreon members for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.